Hi, I'm Joseph and you're watching me at the Vogue wedding show. Welcome to my masterclass. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to make perfect photos at your wedding. And since I'm a photographer and I like numbers a lot, it's going to be a specific number. So it's 10 tips to get perfect photos at your wedding. Uh, before I begin though, I just want to say that this isn't only for brides or this isn't necessarily for your wedding. You could be the friend of a bride, you could be the family member, you could even be the wedding photographer itself, you could even be the wedding deco, the design or the makeup artist and so on and so forth. I find that photographs are not just the best ways to document your memories but for everybody else that I mentioned who's present at a wedding, they're also the best way to document your own work. So there has never been a more important time for good photos. So let's get into it. Tip one, this is going to sound a bit funny. There is no perfect photo. And I say this in all honesty, um, after having spent 11 years of making photos at weddings, there is no perfect photo. What do I mean by this? This is actually not a tip. It's advice. It's advice because um, I think that I believe at least after a decade of shooting weddings that all photos made at a wedding are nothing but personal memories. They could be made with your camera, your phone, anything. But all photos made at your wedding are your personal memories. They're not, they need not be extraordinary moments. They need not even be extraordinary images as well. Sometimes the most extraordinary photos at a wedding are not necessarily the most memorable moments. And the most memorable moments are not the most extraordinary photos. I hope I'm getting through to you. What I've done here is share these three photos while talking to you. One is of the father looking at his son, which is a very simple photo. Then there is this even simpler photo of, a, of the bride reaching out to hold the hand of her mom while she also reaches out to hand the hold of her future husband. And then there is this incredible champagne bottle just jumping out of in the middle of nowhere. Now, I, I am not the one to place importance on any one of these photos. Some of them are perfect, some of them are imperfect, but they're all personal memories. And I'm going to leave you with this. Imperfect photos may actually be the most beautiful memory for you at your wedding. Like this of the groom hugging the bride. Uh, you. This is one of their favorite photos from their wedding. It's actually out of focus from a technical point of view. Tip two, make it personal. What do I mean? Uh, I don't mean you take it personally. I mean you make it personal. Your choice of photographer should be a personal one. Take your time to choose your photographer. This is my advice, especially to brides and grooms who are getting married and are looking to choose a photographer. Go beyond the hype, the awards, the brand and the following. I don't think anybody can tell you what is the kind of wedding photos you will like at your wedding. So look at those photos, go beyond the color and try and ask every photographer that you meet to show more of their work, especially the work beyond Instagram and beyond social media and beyond websites. Finally, make the choice that vibes with you. This comes from a very personal place. This is how I chose my wedding photographer at my wedding. And I think you should do the same as well. And here are some photos just to get you an idea. Maybe you like some real honest photos like this awkward moment between a bride and a groom on the mandap. Or maybe you like dramatic cinematic visuals like this one that I shot at a bridge holy, a fulonki holy. Or maybe you love unbelievable portraits like this. The, I mean, there's reflections, there's lights. It looks almost alien, right? Or maybe you just like them as a person. Maybe you like the wedding photographer as a person. Either way, choose what makes you smile and choose what vibes with you. Tip three, and now I'm going to talk about photography. Light is the most important factor for wedding photos. Irrespective of the style you choose, irrespective of the person you choose, light is the number one most important factor for making good photos, especially at Sangeet's because they're in the night, right? So talk to your planners, talk to your decorators, talk to your designers, and if necessary, talk to your photographer because they may be the most experienced and skilled to ensure that the event looks the best. 
trust me if the event looks good in photos it looked almost as good in real life that's what you're going for so i have this photo to illustrate this this is one of this is a photo from priyanka chopra's sangeet it looks like somebody was telling me yesterday it it looks almost like it's staged but it's not it's just great light as done by the wedding designer the wedding design company and it's also equally important at mandaps because at mandaps while the wedding is going on the actual wedding ceremony there's a multitude of mini subtle emotions which and you want every face to be perfectly lit so this is one of the biggest challenges we face at weddings um the only advice i have is you have four point lighting which means lighting from every pillar available and keep it neutral you want skin to look like skin and not like avatar blue colors Finally it's also important at receptions as well as I'm showing you in this photo I think we tend to forget this part uh, because once the dancing begins you assume that light is not that important but try and light the people as best as you can Tip number 4 and I'm going to give you a cheat code for light daylight is amazing it is the simplest way to make beautiful photos it's the simplest way to bring out all the vividness the color and the joy of an indian wedding this photo of mine which almost everybody of you have seen uh, it's it was made in tuscany at about uh, 11 am in the morning and it is simply the easiest way to ensure pretty photos if you are getting married and if your pundit allows you gives you a muhurat sometime in the morning you are lucky try and use the daylight to make great photos and hey if it is too warm if it is too hot to get married in direct daylight try and put a sheer white cover maybe like i've shown in this photo trust me it always results in colorful happy photos tip number 5 get to know your photographer not just as vendors but get to know them as people i don't mean you stalk them on instagram or uh, facebook and find old photos like i have shown you here of mine whether i'm getting married or me at 3 years old but just understand that as human beings we are the most real in the company of our friends um uh, i've always maintained that i don't shoot 10 weddings a year i make 10 friends a year that's how i look at it and if you are able to do that if you know your photographer even just a little bit it will allow you to be real it will allow you not to be conscious and it will allow you to have photographs like this made at your wedding this is a photo that i think millions have seen of the bride kissing the groom but uh, but i do not expect of the groom kissing the bride but it's a moment like this would have never resulted and would have never been captured if they were conscious of a camera right beside them number 6 uh I'm going to make your wedding sound like a business but appoint a CEO what does this mean ask a friend talk to the planner talk to a family member but appoint somebody who takes charge of the wedding so you can be in the moment and you are not worried about the minute details during your wedding and what does being in the moment really mean you see we don't make great photos till we get to document great moments and this photo that i've shown you here with a bride where the tears rolling off her cheek it's so funny how easy it is not even to feel that emotion if you're worried about whether you know the deco is right the flowers are correct or you know or is the sangeet going to start on time and the many 10000 other things that come with the big indian wedding so it is only possible if you are present so this if there's one tip i give to most brides right before their wedding begins i tell them to keep their phone away for the duration of each event catch up on social media later while you're chilling in bed but just keep away from your phone just for those few hours so give the job of planning execution and perfection to a friend a planner or a family member so you can spend quality time with the people you love number 7 trust your photographer Once you've hired them, once you've done all of this choice, I think it's great if you are able to trust your photographer and if you are able to tell your guest to do so too. The point is the point I'm trying to make here is that you give the photographer the job of documenting your day so that your guests everybody else especially during these covid times when there are such fewer guests at weddings you want all of them to be enjoying the moment and not look like this in their photos. How many times have you seen this? your aunt your uncle or your cousin during an epic moment somebody with the phone right in the background documenting it let the photographers do that job give the job to them and then you'll end up with photos 
like these and like this i love this photo of the bride and groom walking down i think in this about 90 people here all i see is one smartphone being held somebody is doing the right job here all i want is your photos to have happy emotional guests and not just people with phones in their hands tip number 8 hire one photographer and one film team one video team why am i saying this because it happens so often at weddings that an over enthusiastic uncle or another family member gifts gifts photography to the bride and groom what ends up is paparazzi situations like you see here uh, where there is a bunch of people shooting the bride getting ready you don't want this ever to happen at your wedding tip number 9 get a family photo i can't tell you how important this is set aside time for it i believe every wedding in india no matter how big or small or extravagant or intimate should have a great family photo like this this is a this is the kind of family photo that gets passed on from generation to generation is the kind of photo that is printed at home and framed on our walls and it is the first photo that is overlooked in this madness of trends and everything else that social media feeds us with today i think this obsession with candid photos um is easily the easily the biggest bane of our current wedding photography trend so get a proper family portrait taken on your wedding day not just any other day which segues perfectly to my last tip which is make time for portraits of the two of you I think candid photography is amazing. I love the term. Um as much as I hate the term candid wedding photographer, I believe I am just a wedding photographer. I photograph everything. But as cool as candid is, you are more likely to print the posed portraits in your home. 10 years later, those are the photos you're going to go back to. And this comes from somebody who's been doing this for 10 years, right? So take your time to make time for portraits on that day. Make it a part of your wedding schedule. Speak to your planners and trust me for an experienced photographer 15 minutes is a lot of time to make photos like this like this and ensure that it you're not just getting a couple photo get each of your solo single portraits done as well at each wedding. And we're not done just yet. I do have a bonus tip. My bonus tip is for somebody who's for everybody who's gotten married in the last 20 years print your photos you see data is fickle how many of you remember dvds floppy disks usb drives zip drives and so on and so forth today our macbooks and our phones don't even come with a usb port the next phone we use may not even come with any port at all um and the cloud is fickle too what happens if that company shuts down that has all the photos that you have taken at your wedding So understand that data is fickle and it is just a matter of when you lose it not if so print your photos in the largest way possible if you want or the smallest but print all your wedding photos it doesn't take much go ahead and print them with that this comes to a conclusion whoever you are thank you for joining in for this 15 minutes um and i hope you have the happiest big day of your lives and i hope there are even better photos of that happiness